Each year on July the 5th, the Isle of Man celebrates its national day, Tinwald Day. Tinwald, based on the old Norse words Thingvolla, or assembly field, is the national parliament of the Isle of Man, and its roots go back over a thousand years. The parliament normally sits in a splendid chamber in Douglas. But once a year, it meets in the open air at a central location at St. John's, where the ancient Tinwald Hill, with its four tiers, forms a key part of the ceremony. The first record of the name appears in the 13th century manuscript The Chronicles of the Kings of Man and the Isles, which describes various Vikings meeting at the assembly, but not being able to resolve their differences, they resorted to murderous violence. Nowadays, things are much more relaxed, and the main purpose of the gathering is to proclaim to the people the laws which have been enacted during the previous year. The day starts with preparations around the hill. The grandstand is up. The canopy above the hill is there, and chairs are being placed for the members of Tinwald and all the officials and guests who will attend. The upholding of tradition is very important, and before the ceremony, you'll see rushes being scattered on the ceremonial walkway between the church and the hill. This is an acknowledgement of an ancient tradition where Manx folk used to pay tribute to the god Mananan by placing rushes on the summit of South Peru. Another tradition sees the wearing of a piece of St. John's wort, or bullion bairn. There's a constant stream of guests arriving, not just the Tinwald members in their top hats, but officials such as the chairman of the local commissioners, members of the clergy, officers of the crown, as well as a wide variety of guests from the parliaments of other countries who've been invited to watch the proceedings. There's a display of Manx dancing on the nearby field. And soon there's the sound of a military band in the distance. Each year, a band and a guard of honour are invited to attend the ceremony and the duty is shared between all branches of the forces. When everyone is in position, a fanfare marks the arrival of the Queen's representative on the island, the Lieutenant Governor. Although the Governor no longer presides over the regular sittings of Tinwald in Douglas, at this annual open-air sitting, he does preside, effectively standing in for the monarch, who also holds the title Lord of Man. The governor receives an invitation from the commanding officer of the Guard of Honor to make an inspection. After this, he goes to the nearby National War Memorial. Here, in a short ceremony, he lays a wreath in honour of all those Manx people who gave their lives in the two world wars. From here, he goes to the hall next to the church, from where a series of processions make their way to St. John's Church. There's the members of Tinwald, followed by the island's judges, the Deemsters, who play a key part in the ceremony. Finally, the governor, preceded by the Manx Sword of State, an ancient blade set to date from the 14th century. For many centuries, the Tinwell ceremony has started with a church service. In previous times, dignitaries and guests would be expected to sit through lengthy sermons, some maybe as long as an hour. 
Nowadays, the service is confined to appropriate prayers and some hymns, one of which is sung by the winner of the Manx Music Festival's Cleveland Medal for that year. The service is relayed to the crowds outside who can join in. When the service is over, the guests and officials make their way along the ceremonial walkway to take their respective places on and around the hill. I was lately chaplain to the Archbishop of York. When everyone is seated, the first deemster instructs the island's senior coroner to fence the court. Coroner of Glenfaber Sheeting and in Lyda, fence the court. I defence this court of Timwald in the name of our most gracious sovereign lady, the Queen. I charge that no person do quarrel, brawl, or make any disturbance. Coroners undertake various duties throughout the year, such as summonsing juries and enforcing aspects of court judgments. Fencing the court is an ancient Timwald tradition which, in effect, gives the onlookers notice that the court is in session and that anyone making a disturbance or interfering with proceedings will be dealt with accordingly. After fencing it in English, the court is fenced in Manx Gaelic. The island's four coroners are then sworn in for another year. They kneel before His Excellency, take an oath, and each one is handed a staff of office. Learned Deemsters, I exhort you to proclaim to the people in ancient form such laws... After an instruction from His Excellency, the main business of the ceremony starts, the promulgation of the laws that have been passed by Tinwald during the preceding year. Anti-Terrorism and Crime Amendment Act 2011, which amends further the Anti-Terrorism and Crime Act 2003, and makes minor... The first deemster reads the title and summary of the Act in English. The second deemster reads the same in Manx Gaelic. In earlier times, when the sittings of Tinwald were held in private, the promulgation of the laws on Tinwald Day was the first time the people of the island got to hear the details of the new laws that would affect them. And up until relatively recently, the promulgation was done without a public address system, so the Deemsters really had to speak up. Although the Lieutenant Governor stands in for the monarch on Tinwell Day, the monarch, or a member of the royal family, does sometimes attend the ceremony. And the first time this happened was in 1945, when King George VI and Queen Elizabeth visited the island for the first time. How proud the Manx folk were as their majesties took their place among their loyal citizens. When the promulgation is complete, there's then the opportunity for any member of the public to present a petition for the redress of a grievance. These are usually issues that citizens haven't been able to sort out in any other way, for example, through the courts. Petitioning is regarded as an ancient right at the ceremony. As long as they're drawn up in the correct way, the petitions will be put before Tinwald at a later sitting, and any member can call for a debate on the issue raised, which might lead to further investigation and, in some cases, a change in the law. I shall refer these petitions to the Standing Orders Committee of Tinwald, who will report thereon at their earliest convenience. When all the business on the hill is finished, everyone processes back to the church for the final part of the day's business. Here, there is a further sitting of the Tinwell Court, 
where all the acts that have just been promulgated are signed to confirm that this has indeed happened. The Speaker signs on behalf of the House of Keys and the President signs on behalf of the Legislative Council and Tinwald. The acts are now ready to come into force. They'll be given an appointed day order. In other words, a specific date on which they come into force. In recent years, a new aspect of the Tinwald ceremony has been the addition of an award, the Tinwald Honour, given by Tinwald to a member of the community for an outstanding contribution to Manx life over a significant period of time. When all the business is concluded, there's just time for a group photograph before everyone disperses for the day. Meanwhile, the Tinwald Fair is in full swing, another tradition that goes back many centuries. Space for the stalls is keenly contested and they reflect the national flavor of Tinwald Day, a time when the Manx people gather at the spectacular location of St. John's to celebrate their independence and national identity. <laughs>